Well, hey, thanks again for uh, having me today. And um, I, I didn't see any specific response there, but I'll kind of speak to some of the things that uh, Jesse outlined and talk about uh, creation of ATA or um, XAPI statements uh, with authoring tools and uh, kind of the state of the industry as I've seen. I uh, shared with uh, Jesse a, a link which I, I think, Jesse, you can pass on to the team there of a article that I co-wrote with a uh, number of other folks where we researched uh, the uh, different authoring tools. And I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the um, uh, s significant gaps in terms of developing XAPI. I think it's safe to say that the tools that support XAPI, for the most part, what they've done is taken XAPI or basically taken SCORM statements turned them into XAPI and then added in an additional statement of, I visited this page. And that's the extent that uh, most tools have in terms of supporting XAPI. And even when it comes to publishing those uh, statements, uh, sometimes they make it a bit more challenging than it needs to be. So I thought I would do is uh, walk through our Domino platform and, uh, you'll actually get a chance to take a look at our beta that we're releasing next week. And this is for, um, we're actually rebranding it actually as Domino One, because uh, it actually brings together both our Claro, which is your fixed pixel PowerPoint type style design and our Flow, which is our fully responsive adaptive design that changes automatically for screen widths as well as uh, software SIM all into one platform. Uh, with our uh, platform, uh, a lot of things that uh, we changed and updated in terms of XAPI is we wanted to make sure that uh, when you're using uh, XAPI, you don't have to think about it as much. So when you go to publish a course, we have a number of different published settings that you can turn on and off. So I'm going to come right over to that right now. And we call these publishing profiles. So under publishing profiles, as you might imagine, there's things like, hey, how many test attempts do you allow retesting, et cetera. But in addition, for XAPI, we have all these different types of statements that we are sending automatically that you can turn on and off. Uh, one of the options we have is, do you want to anonymize your statements? So uh, and for the actor information, if you have that turned on, it will actually give a anonymous ID instead of the uh, user's uh, email address, which is usually what the ID is. That's an option you can turn on and off. Within our authoring tool, you can turn on the ability for students to search your content. And we have courses that look like a knowledge base, uh, all sorts of different ways that you can position your content because it's not just about your traditional next, next, next uh, PowerPoint converted course. Uh, so there's statements with the search that is, did they open the search? Uh, what were the search results and what did they pick? So those are included automatically if you turn that on. Uh, player control statements. You may want to know, did they click on next? Did they click on previous? How did they navigate it through using the standard controls? Uh, those can be turned on or off. Um, outline statements. If you have an outline where they can go to the menu and jump through the course tree, um, it will, did they open up the outline? Did they jump to certain spots in the outline? That will be included. Mm -hmm. um, resources, uh, glossaries and citations. Citations are footnotes, uh, which are also built in, but all those when they access the glossary or download a resource, those are automatic statements uh, sent. And when they drag and drop an item, uh, different statements for it hit the drop target or they dragged an item. Um, all your actions, so if they click on something, they double click on it, they right click on it, they mouse over, um, all those actions are action statements sent along with the type of action they sent. Um, and again, all you do is author it and then it automatically sends that. Uh, for media statements, uh, right now we do a, did they uh, play it? Did they pause it? Did they uh, consume it? Uh, we're actually looking to update those to follow the uh, 
uh, profile or the recipe that has been developed for media, um, which wasn't out when we actually added this. So we're looking to update that, but it's tracking that automatically. Um, and element content statements, we actually have in our tool, if you wanna add a content carousel or tabs or a flashcard where you flip it over um, or, or tabs uh, or uh, timeline, those are things built right into our tool. And if you turn on this, then when they view different nodes in the timeline or they click on the content carousel and go and look at different items in the carousel or finish the carousel, uh, these are all automatic statements uh, being sent. And then too, if you wanna include the additional browser information like what browser, what version, uh, what OS, um, that's something you can turn on and off and that's using that extension that I, I think several of you are familiar with. So these are all the automatic things that we're including uh, when you uh, create your content, potentially if you turn those on. In addition, uh, of course, like any advanced authoring system, you have all sorts of actions. So I can uh, come over here to interactions and have show, hide, you know, play media, send variables, et cetera. But in addition, I can also send my own custom XAPI statements. And when I hit send XAPI statement, um, let me move the Zoom uh, panel out of my way. It'll mm -hmm. come up here where I have, of course, all the different triggers and, and what triggers you have depend on your situation. So these will change. Um, don't have anything specifically to do with XAPI, but what triggers the statement. And then I can pick uh, from a verb. And basically what we've done is uh, we pulled in all the ADL and uh, Russacy or uh, tin can verbs that were available at the time. This is where, as uh, Jesse had mentioned, hey, profiles. Uh, where we envision if there is a profile server with an API and they pick a I uh, yeah, um, um, uh, like, thank you profile. <laughs> I want to say recipe, but yeah, they pick that profile. Then uh, these verbs would uh, most likely we keep the standard ones, but then they'd have another section for the other verbs that they could go ahead and pick. Uh, but yeah, you pick that verb, it's going to automatically throw that label in. You do have to put in your unique URI there. If you don't, uh, it won't let you put the statement in. For all the automatic statements, we're automatically adding in um, the unique URI of our uh, system. And then of course, uh, same thing here for the type. Again, we pulled all those in. Again, that would tie to the profile. Um, in addition, you may want to be sending additional data besides just that statement. So for success, response, and score, these are uh, allow you to add in variables. So um, our system, um, you can put in those uh, variables. And uh, when you put in those uh, variables, um, in this case, this is a spot where you can put in uh, Boolean variables. Um, you can also put in number variables, et cetera. And again, you can pull in those system variables or if you've created custom variables, you can add that additional data in. And then of course, name and description, those are exactly what you think. You can put that in. Uh, conditions down here, this doesn't have anything to do with XAPI per se. It's just another advanced capability of our tool. So hey, I can say when clicked, but you know, uh, I want when clicked and uh, learner completion equals passed or something like that. Um, so I can add additional conditions or triggers for those uh, uh, variables. And then I simply apply that statement. Uh, again, I didn't put in my proper URI, so it's uh, letting me know, but I would apply that statement and then that statement along with any of the other automatic statements will be sent. When it comes to publishing, again, this is another area we found that some of the tools, unfortunately, make it a lot harder than it should be. Uh, but for us, uh, what we do is uh, the first thing you need to do is as an admin to our system, is set up your profile or your um, target, LRS target. So under publishing, we have something called targets. Um, and then under uh, targets, I would hit new target, uh, pick LRS, we also support pens, but picking your target, you know, call it whatever you want, that's just the useful name. And then put in that URI, URL target for your LRS. 
and put in the user ID and password. Now, some LRSs, you can upload it without a target. It's going to automatically take the package as other ones you can't, um, or they don't host the package. So that's why you have that, you, um, that target. When you go to publish the package, you have several different options. We can go the uh, straight XAPI LRS route, which I click on LRS here, and then it's going to have XAPI chosen. And then I can pick the primary LRS, but we also support additional analytics targets. Um, so you can have it send off to two, three, five LRSs if you want, and that's where those would show up. If uh, I, the default choice is supplied by LRS, that means I didn't supply any target, but I can pick a different target if I have that one and bring that in, and it'll send all those items. I should mention, in, in addition to automatic statements, we also track practice questions as part of our automatic statements and inline questions. I didn't mention that earlier. Um, or if I'm in that situation, like I think most people are of, hey, I still need to put in the LMS. I still need to do SCORM. Um, let's see, let me back up. Oops, come back over to publish here. There we go. And so I still need to do SCORM, so I'm gonna pick SCORM 2004, but I wanted to go ahead and track LRS data at the same time. So what you can do if you pick SCORM is if you have your LRS targets, you can select one or more targets and then it will track the SCORM data in your LMS and at the same time, send all the XAPI data off to any LRS that you want or multiple LRSs. If uh, that is what's desired. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of uh, the Domino solution, the Domino One or Flow or Claro, if you know it by those names, that uh, enables um, you to do in terms of uh, publishing and creating your XAPI. Like I said, probably the, the biggest thing to add in in terms of support of XAPI would be those uh, additional profiles. But uh, like I said, we're kind of waiting until that's finalized and the uh, as the, it was discussed uh, momentarily before I jumped on was the uh, LRS profile server um, planning and tying in with that the uh, next update that we plan prior to that would be support for CMI5 um, mm -hmm. so um, uh, we will go ahead and be adding that probably in this fall this mm -hmm. fall um, have you considered um, connect to all the profiles currently available on the profile server? Um, yeah, I'll be honest, we are not. Uh, we've not had a single customer who is uh, ready to even go ahead and pick a profile. Uh, most of our customers are uh, just either starting to dabble into XAPI and create things, um, starting to do some dynamic things like getting data from um, an LRS and using that right within the course because you can pull in variables and do custom widgets, but uh, we haven't had anybody that has expressed interest other than Jesse <laughs> uh, of uh, using different profiles yet. So for us right now, like I said, we're waiting on that server there. Um, you know, we do have the capability potentially of doing a custom if it uh, made sense for the customer and us. Yeah, prior to that. But uh, like I said, right now, there has been uh, no interest in that area. And um, a lot of folks sometimes are, are in there, they're, they're, uh, they aren't ready, they, they want to do XAPI, but not enough to go ahead and perhaps switch from the authoring solution that they're using. So even though we make it much easier than any other solution out there, they're not interested in XAPI enough to switch but we certainly have seen a number of folks that are just like, well, we're tired of it. We want to have a fully responsive authoring solution and XAPI. And we started to see some adoption there and uh, some interesting projects that I think uh, some of our customers might be able to talk about at, say, DevLearn or, or some of the uh, upcoming conferences. Yeah, I can see you already designed and embedded SAPI statements in the environment. And mm -hmm. That's really advanced, maybe the best support for SAPI so far. Um, but you, you use uh, 
also um, ideal verb in the Russell C. Um, but Russell C's verb and profile is not um, the, I mean, conformant profiles on the. Yeah, team. that's correct. Uh, we added part of our, for better or for worse, uh, we were early adopters of Tin mm -hmm. Can and then XAPI. And so we add some of these uh, functionalities in early on. And so one of the problems of being a leader is that you end up using things that aren't approved yet. So we, we've done that and, and we're kind of at the stage of we're waiting for the standards to, and, and folks to kind of catch up on some of that and we'll do revisions accordingly. So, so you, Paul, okay, go ahead. Uh, Paul, this is Mike J. Um, question just thinking about defining learning engineers um, just you know since it's our core goal of icicle um, I mean if we prepare individuals right now to use XAPI is it your sense that it's organizationally there's a barrier towards adoption or is it lack of individuals with expertise or it's not compelling enough yet to make that switch um, I'm just trying to understand. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that's a great question. And, you know, what I've seen, and, and this doesn't surprise me, but um, I think the biggest barrier is, uh, you know, learning engineers, and let's just use that term uh, loosely to describe anybody in learning right now. The learning engineers, they've, when it comes to data, they've known that the course has been completed, maybe a few of them have even looked at question analysis from the data, which has been available forever, but um, even that they've really looked at. So the idea of big data and doing something with it and actually being able to um, be at the uh, table and explain how my training is having an impact on the organization and have data to back it up, um, not only is that exciting for some folks, but for many folks it's scary and for a lot of folks, they have absolutely no concept of how to go ahead and communicate that. So it, it, it reminds me a lot of uh, when I was you know, working with marketing folks uh, many years ago before they started to get uh, the Google Analytics of the world out there. And um, there was a lot of folks that just didn't know what to do. Some of them didn't handle the transition well and are no longer in marketing. And then Others did handle it well, or others kind of got by until the uh, visualization tools and the data made it easier for the work, and they, they learned how to use that and how to capitalize on it. So I think uh, that's the biggest problem, and, and really as a learning engineer, we should be focusing on how to write XAPI statements. To me, that's uh, you know fun for those folks who think it's fun. But uh, that's not something we should be focusing on. It's like, how can we use that data and how can we show that there's an impact on it? And instead of focusing on, well, gee, I should really just have this one piece of data or five pieces of data because it's overwhelming to me to have 50 pieces is to think about how can we use big data and how can we use all this information to start to show those trends. And then for the LRS is to have reports out of the box that tie into say all the things that Domino is doing automatically and then to work with those uh, folks to build that. But so, that seems so, to me to be it. Go ahead. Just a quick follow on. So do you think the trick is to go, is to, is to work with the customer to reset expectations so that they're asking and that becomes a requirement? Um, I, I'm just trying to figure out how do we stimulate this to move us to a new level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, in, in some of the ways it is that. I mean, part of it's, uh, you know, me as a learning engineer attending a webinar and finding out, you know, this person at, I don't know, Oracle, uh, this is how we handled the situation before. Now we're able to show this and the uh, C-level suite uh, basically uh, – fell off their chairs when they understood what the impact training was making or not making. And I was able to show it this way very clearly. Um, and here's how you can easily get to that without having to program and, you know, jump through a bazillion hoops. Um, so yeah. just a last thought for the group, it might be interesting to, to look at creating some case studies um, that look at how it's been done previously and what XAPI brings to the to the party. 
And, yeah, and those that connection, I, I feel that when I talk to folks, they realize that that could help them get there. But seeing those stories and where I was and where I could be um, and what it did for me, you know, those are the things that really give them the aha moments. And I've been to a few different ones where a couple of those have been presented. A lot of times they don't have the before or after. There was one case where they did, and uh, you could just see the light bulbs going off in the room. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the state of the tools at that time, and even to the extent sure. now, they were like, okay, I can really see it, but I have no idea how to get there. And it seems very complicated. And you're talking about how to write a statement and I don't want to do that or learn how to do that. Ultimately, it has to be compelling for the C-level individuals in those organizations to, yes. to set that as a direction and stick to it. So we can't just talk to the technical gang. Yes. But if you right, don't, this uh, is Mitch. Okay. Yeah, uh, and I, I concur with that statement. That uh, at, at least speaking on the government end, uh, it's nice to be able to impress the technical staff. But the technical staff don't get to make any decisions, and they certainly don't get to spend any real money. So, to uh, if you want to nudge the industry in this way, you're taking the first step, which is upsizing it to a standard from a spec. That's that's really really important because at a certain level of management, they just they just won't buy into specs. They only buy into standards because they have to cost out their investment over five or 10 or 15 years. Uh, even if part of the investment is is the, in my case, the courseware content, which if it's CMI, may have a lifespan of three years. Uh, the other thing I'd comment on uh, that, that somebody mentioned earlier, and, and, and it's almost got, it almost got missed. <clears throat> It's great to set, it's great to provide folks like 15 capabilities, but if one of the capabilities that they don't get is one that they critically need that they already have, then at some point, 15 don't matter if the one's gone. You know, what I'm talking about here in particular is uh, the capability to record and throw back to the RTS or, or whatever it is, the LRS, go mm -hmm. back the CMI interaction data for the, uh, for the transaction, which in, in most government use cases is the actual responses that are used for item analysis, which is what caught my ear. While it's true that a lot of people are paying lip service to item analysis, which is you know, how, did, how many people got question one right, how many people got question two right, and how did they miss it? Required part in the federal government's training and effectiveness analysis, which is make, which is sort of coming back in a big way now. Uh, so whatever goes forward, if you really want to sell it, to government, uh, you, you have to provide support for CM uh, the, to where the the coder or, or the tool, preferably the tool, uh, sets in the CMI interaction uh, attributes that you need for. The, uh, for that interaction to be recorded by whatever the store is on the back end so it can be recovered to conduct item analysis for training effectiveness analysis. Over. Um, yeah, I, we, we had a conversation in the SAPM MOOC uh, meeting with uh, that's led by John Kevin. So um, it's important that Lack of knowledge is one reason for adoption barrier, but um, there are still some other factors. Uh, and a good point raised is after they um, uh, they get the knowledge of SAP, but the, the instructional designer still cannot start to use SAP because they need the support of the like also in tool or uh, other tools providers to send SAPI data or to let them can design SAPI data. So the, uh, the vendor support is crucial here. And if you can lower the, this technical and coordination barrier, that will lower the adoption barrier. And, when, right, and that's kind of what I was referring to is that, that yeah. barrier to get people to to uh, adapt a, a new technology is, is uh, no, I hate to say it, but in, in the federal government, it's becoming more increasingly so rather than less uh, due to recent events. Uh, the, they, they, they just, 
if, if they hear the word standard, they go into ecstasy. If they hear the word specification, they go, oh. Uh, whether, that's, whether that's fair or not, it's a different, different, different equation. It's just that at a certain level of management, guys that, that aren't really technical, uh, it's sort of like, you know, you say, well, I'm going to build you a house in stone or, or one of the other levels that, that, that uh, the, the little pigs built their house in before the wolf came by or whatever. Uh, so it's, it's just almost visceral with them. Uh, and I'm, I'm normally the guy arguing your position, but, but I, I just, you know, I just have to get across to folks that once you reach that, that C or higher level management, they just, if they understand the difference between the standard and spec, they just, they just tune you out, which is why getting this into a standard while that, while that's working, that's really, really, really good. Over. Right. And, this, oh. and I just want to kind of comment on the, the kind of awkward place a tool vendor gets put in by all of this. So when we ask, you know, Paul to implement profiles, well, the profiles aren't really mature yet. And to Mitch's point, they're probably specifications at best. CMI5 is a good target because it's going to target getting becoming a standard. We don't know enough about the other profiles to do it, but we still want people to be using what's out there as, as those profile statements. So it gets to be this interesting conundrum. And I'm, I'm thinking technically the solution might be to, you know, I think what you have is great. And I think there, you, there just needs to be on some of these tools, a place for advanced users to be able to do really advanced things, like create your own statement from a cut paste. And then we as the community put out there with the profile server, the ability to create statements from a web form that you can just then essentially, you know, copy out of there and paste into those tools. That would be one level and even better level for a tool in my opinion would be being able to pull in one of these JSON LD or turtle files that a profile makes up <coughs> and then responsibly react to it in terms of letting the, the user populate fields like you do already for the, the statements that are there, but then intelligently providing those drop downs, which I know is a, is a, a bigger step, but th we have to figure out these ways to bridge the gap between what's, you know, what, how we can put standards out there, um, and, but still have them matured through use and how we can help connect tool vendors to those, uh, to, not only to standards, but to these fledgling specifications. Um, but I, I did want to tip my hat to Paul for, for seeing these standards in play. Well, XAPI is a spec, but close enough to a standard that are going after it. CMI5, close enough to a standard that are going after it. Uh, so I, I did want to tip my hat to you for, for going after those specs to, soon to be standard. Thanks. Yeah, we definitely Agreed. see the uh, great capabilities here. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's, Exciting to get to, we, we have a few customers now who are actually saying, hey, this is actually gonna enable us to do those types of things such as make sure I get the right uh, content to the right person and, and limit the number of content pieces so they don't have to spend as long in training and, and really start to leverage XAPI in different ways that mm -hmm. um, SCORM just uh, never enabled them to do. Even uh, from how they launch and present content um, it's opening up possibilities of not even being stuck in that uh, SCORM window, if you, SCORM window, if you will. So um, I, I do mention I, I, I will have to drop off in five minutes because I do have a call I need to prep for for my next uh, call too. So um, Paul, you mentioned that you can do customize for the SAP statement. And can you elaborate on that? Sure. Uh, occasionally, we will uh, work with customers to do uh, custom, uh, and I say custom, but it's basically prioritization of features or capabilities. Um, and uh, usually those are enterprise clients, larger clients, and, uh, you know, there's a cost associated with it. And we usually take that spec and what they want to do, as long as it makes sense from a product standpoint, like, for example, this would then we end up uh, building that into it. Uh, they, they pay extra for this to happen and we work with them to happen. And then the nice thing is that uh, they get all the next updates, but then uh, later on when we release an update, then everyone else benefits from it too, so. Yeah. So um, for metadata that can be incorporated into a statement, 
Um, can you explain more on this? Yeah, so for those custom statements, as you saw when I was doing the screen share, uh, we have three different uh, open fields in addition to the name and description where you can add additional metadata. So for example, like uh, when you have a test question, it's done automatically, but it's adding in, you know, what they picked. So you can add in any variable. Uh, we have <coughs> many different system variables of things that are tracking automatically in the course, but you can create your own variables and pass that uh, custom metadata um, through that particular custom statement. And as far as I know, I, um, I, the only tool I think might do that, and I don't know if they do do that at all, is Lectora. Um, that might have some option, but I don't know of any other tool that does that actually. <laughs>